4.4 implementation and operation is the second section of ISO 14001. It really is the um, how the organisation is managing their management system on a day-to-day -day basis. It includes seven sections, um, roles, responsibilities and authority, um, competence, training and awareness, communication, documentation, uh, control of documents, operational control and emergency response. Well, the roles, resources, responsibility and authority is really the, uh, the structure by which um, the management system is operated. Re resources refer to skills, people within the organisation that will be employed in the operation of the management system, finance that is involved in the operation of a management system and also technology, equipment, processes, new technology that may be employed uh, as a resource to improve the environmental management system. Competence training and awareness is a very important section. This is where you really start to involve members of their staff in the operation and the implementation of your environmental management system. You need to define training needs, you need to exercise the training plan that you've developed and also on an ongoing basis make sure that the staff that you have employed in your organisation are familiar, aware and competent to do their tasks while minimising their impact on the environment. Common weaknesses that you would see in development of a process for identifying the training, training requirements and the competency requirements of individuals in an organisation would be that, first of all, they don't identify, organisations typically don't identify well what competency require, is required of a specific role. To do that, the standard requires that you carry out a training needs analysis for a particular role. You match it in terms of what training this individual has had in their past already, and then you identify the gaps. So once you've identified the gaps, that should form the focus of a company's training plan going forward. Clause 4.4.3 communication includes two important elements. The first one is internal communication. This involves communication with your staff on the significant environmental aspects, procedures, um, everything relating to the environmental management system relating to their job. The second element of communication is external communication. Communication to regulatory bodies, communication to third parties that have an involvement within your organisation and any stakeholders that might have an interest in um, your environmental management system. Documentation uh, is an important element in ISO 14001. The standard lays out some important documents that need to be considered and included in the environmental management system. Documents such as policy, objectives and targets, uh, significant uh, aspects and maybe procedures relating to tasks that members of the staff might carry out. Documentation is important, it has to be traceable, retrievable and understood by anybody within the organisation. Control of documents, you need to establish a process and a procedure for um, developing procedures or documents within your environmental management system and controlling them. What we mean by controlling them is issuing them, um, revising them and if necessary removing them if they become obsolete. A user, a user friendly and effective ISO 14001 environmental manual is generally brief to the point it covers each of the sections of the standard. It gives an overview of those sections of the standard and how the company actually complies with those requirements of the standard. 4.4.6 operational control is a very important element within your uh, environmental management system. This is the clause of the standard which allows you to develop procedures relating to your site specific activities which control significant aspects, impacts on the environment. This is a very important clause of the standard because it ensures the organisation puts a procedure in place that controls their significant environmental aspects. The organisation will note that any deviation from these stated procedures may impact on, envir on the environment. Clause 4.4.7, uh, Emergency Preparedness and Response. This is a really important clause of the standard. What the organisation needs to do here is identify the potential or the actual emergency situations that, if they occurred, could have a significant impact on the environment. The organisation must put a procedure or a plan in place that if this incident occurs, that they have a robust procedure or plan that will reduce their impact on the environment and control the emergency situation. This 
plan must be tested on an annual basis to ensure that it reflects the organisation's needs.